Hey, Weather Warriors, we got a storm brewing out here in the southeastern United States, a pretty significant storm system with ice, snow, severe weather, heavy rain. I'm going to be talking about this and where it's headed and what type of impacts could occur in today's forecast update. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed, educational, in-depth forecasts just like this and click those bell notifications because this is time-sensitive material. It's best to view these forecasts as they're hot off the press. All right, so today's update, you can see a nice band developing here, the storm system out in Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee, and even Kentucky here. There's some convection blowing up right out of the Gulf. There's a nice stream of moisture coming up, and that's starting to feed this system. Now, if we look at the radar, you can see a really significant band of heavy rain and even freezing rain. So there is a pretty serious situation here in northern Louisiana into parts of eastern Mississippi and southern Arkansas where there's freezing rain, sleet, and then this northern part is the snow where you see the banding kind of smooth out a little bit more. To the south, this is thunderstorms. Right as these thunderstorms kind of smooth out, hit that cold air mass, it turns to freezing rain and even some isolated thunder within that freezing rain. So pretty significant. We're going to go over snowfall amounts and other things for the rest of the country here in a second, but you can see warnings all over the place from Virginia down into Texas. You got uh, those winter storm warnings, the purples are your winter weather advisories, the blues winter storm watches. So still some uncertainty out here in the Northeast. Yeah, there's actually been a southward trend in the models, but Right now, we're looking at watches and would not be surprised to see some of that area be upgraded to warnings uh, not too far from now. But right now, this afternoon, we're looking at, again, this is the model precipitation and we're gonna fast forward this hour by hour. That red area is your freezing rain. This yellow right here, probably convection thunderstorms getting fed out of that Gulf of Mexico. That'll lift north and turn into freezing rain. As it does, when you get that thunderstorms to move into this, you're going to get some very heavy freezing rain and uh, accumulations could be significant. I'll go talk about that in a second. This purple area, sleet. I think there's going to be a lot of sleet with this type of system. The environment seems to support it. And then to the north of that, there's going to be some snow in, in Arkansas, but nothing significant, you know, maybe six inches or less in the heaviest areas. You can see the 540 line. This is the rain to snow line. This is the thing we're going to want to keep our eye on. This is, generally speaking, the rain to snow line. It's not 100% accurate. If you get snow south of that, it's usually wet, and then you get mixed sleet and uh, freezing rain. Now, you might be wondering, how heavy is this precipitation going to be? Well, we're looking at the frontogenesis. This is up in the mid-levels, and this is kind of measuring where the fronts are occurring, where there's convergence, and it, it, it runs approximately from central Mississippi out into north central Louisiana. That is where the heaviest sleet, freezing rain, and snow is going to be. And the freezing rain is going to be on the southern extent of this axis right here. So running right through the northern half of Louisiana. So it could be very, very heavy at some times here. And you can see the, uh, the advection as well within this area. Significant lift centered right over that area. So a pretty significant concern as well. And you look at the RGM and it's very similar as well. This is also something we look at. We look at the mid-level lift. This is the rising motion, how fast stuff is rising in the mid-levels. And that's where your precipitation is occurring at 700 millibars. And you can see it's very strong and you can see it follows the thunderstorms, kind of the radar pattern, but it's extremely strong up here again in that, that border of Mississippi and Louisiana. I think that's where the maximum areas are going to occur. So let's fast forward this now. This is Thursday at around 1 a.m. overnight here. You can see uh, some freezing rain and some sleet breaking out in uh, north central Mississippi to the north of that line, light to moderate snow. The main axis of lift is just to the east. So as this moves northeast, the heaviest snow is going to move northeast as well, right where that axis is, where that thunderstorms move north, kind of like a fire hose, into that Arctic air mass. Here it is. We're moving same time here, Thursday morning. We're moving farther northeast. Again, the axis, the heaviest lift, now is running through central Tennessee into eastern Kentucky. That's where the heaviest snowfall rates could occur. There could be snowfall rates of one to two inches an hour. The issue is your 540 lines all the way up here, temperatures are going to be battling the freezing zone down here. So even though the snow be coming down at a heavy clip, it's going to be a wet snow. So it might not accumulate as well as 
you know, powdery snow. Uh, so that even though it's one to two inches an hour, it might melt a little bit as well. Heaviest freezing rain is going to be back here, but I don't, I don't think it's going to be as bad of a threat in this zone right here with this type of look. The storm might recycle some convergence to the east. We'll go over that in a second where there could be another ice threat. But the heaviest ice threat usually occurs as these low pressure systems are developing. And as we saw here in Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, that's where that storm was really developing. It's pretty new. So it might lose its freezing rain grip a little bit and mostly be a rain and snow maker uh, within the Tennessee Valley area on Thursday uh, morning and Thursday afternoon. But it will become another freezing rain threat later on. You can see the axis of heavy its lift right here through parts of Tennessee, but it's going to be battling that rain to snow line. Going to be kind of going back and forth. Plenty of moisture. This is that 700 millibar moisture. No issues with dry air other than parts of Mississippi. So again, not, not a huge concern, but uh, that's very good news for parts of Mississippi and Louisiana. So let's fast forward this. Let's go to Thursday at 1 a.m. You can see this low moves to the northeast even farther now. And that main area of lift is now over Virginia, North Carolina, and parts of west eastern Kentucky and parts of West Virginia, where there's going to be a mixture of sleet and freezing rain. I don't think you're going to get a whole lot of snow in this area. Some models are forecasting several inches of snow in that area. I'm not buying it. The mid-levels and low levels are just too warm, particularly the low levels here for snowfall of any you know serious magnitude however you could get multiple inches of sleet maybe record amounts of sleet in some areas it's going to be sleeting and freezing raining for quite a while within these this zone right here north carolina and virginia maybe several hours there could be you know one to three inches of sleet in some of those areas maybe even locally higher amounts. So tons of sleet. Sleet doesn't accumulate very well, so that is quite a bit. To the north of that, there's going to be some light snow, but the main axis of lift is going to be to the south, so the snow to the north is mostly eh, kind of wrap around from the eastern, just north of that warm front, really light snow for the most part. But it could be prolonged and could add up. You can see uh, as we uh, look at the temperatures around this time, 32 degrees here so you'll see precipitation there is actually being forecasted but it's 32 degrees at the surface now the upper levels in this area are actually above freezing so it's actually warmer in the upper levels but it's freezing at the surface and that's creating your freezing rain so let's uh go to the east here and then again this is thursday morning at around 6 a.m you can pretty much the same thing we we're looking at here but just farther east Lots of rain surging north into that Arctic air mass. You see these dashed lines? That's your temperature gradient. Your Arctic air mass is up here to the north, so it's blowing right into that, that convection. And that's what's getting your extreme wintry mess here for parts of the northeast. Again, the heaviest snow is going to occur just north and northeast with this type of configuration of the freezing rain and sleet zone. So just north of that, that's where your heaviest snow is going to be. So north parts of uh, West Virginia into parts of Pennsylvania. And you can see that reflected here on the lift. The heaviest lift is within that zone. So that's the vertical velocities. And the frontogenesis would put, again, the heaviest axis right there. And that's going to be mostly sleet, like I said. But that northern, just north of that, you could get some heavy snow. Maybe even also in parts of Pennsylvania, but there you go again. There's the invection. And then as we look at the 850 millibar temperatures, this is what I'm talking about. Look at Virginia and North Carolina. The zero degree Celsius line is blue. So that's your freezing line. This is your freezing line right up here. Now look at the surface. If we go down to the surface, the freezing line is much farther south. So it's actually warmer just off the surface. That's giving you your freezing rain. So it and sleet. It goes from snow, then it melts, and then it refreezes towards the surface, and that's why you get your, your little pellets to develop that sleet pellet. Okay, so by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, here's the low pressure system. Your main lift and energy is usually just out ahead of it, and so that's going to run from, you know, the Atlantic Ocean up to just about the coast there. 
So your axis of heaviest sleet is just off the coast. The stuff back here is kind of leftover wraparound precipitation. So only slight to a uh, light to moderate precipitation uh, Thursday afternoon. Still some pretty significant rainfall. There could be some severe weather as well in the southeast. We'll go over that in a second. And your axis of heaviest snow runs from the coast just into about eastern PA. And if you look at the lift in the mid-levels, again, that's where your lift is. Your best lift is just off the ocean. If this were to trend any farther north, that would put parts of you know, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Maryland, parts of New York under the gun for some very heavy sleet and snow. But right now that appears just to be off the coast, your frontogenesis. Now, the other issue we have is moisture. Uh, there's a lot of dry air that kicks into this thing and kind of shuts off that snowfall. Now, if you go back and look at the, the uh, temperatures around this time, you can see that 540 line is farther to the east. However, that dry air kicks in, so that will shut off the snowfall potential just a little bit and keep things lighter in nature. And you can see here on Friday morning around 1 a.m., as it moves to the east, that snow is pretty light across New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Vermont, Massachusetts, you know, Maryland, et cetera here. But uh, some light snow, some flurries, it'll start to add up over time, prolonged snow event. But again, the main source of lift for heavy snow is going to be in the Atlantic Ocean and when it's sleeting in uh, Virginia and West Virginia. So the snow will be lighter, but longer duration, light to moderate snow, but longer duration. It'll still stack up and uh, you'll get some snow. And by Friday afternoon, this system's pretty much out of here. Maybe some leftover flurries on the backside. We'll look at amounts here in a second, but one other thing I wanted to show you is the severe weather potential on Thursday afternoon. This is around 4 p.m. This is the dew points. Look at that, 60s dew points coming into Florida, southern Georgia, and parts of even South Carolina. Anywhere within this zone, this front and south of that, has the potential to see some severe weather. We've got some pretty juicy uh, moisture for this time of year. Here's your instability. This measures the buoyancy in the atmosphere. If it's warmer at the surface and colder aloft, well, that warmer is going to rise. And that's what you get when you get these higher shades of color here. You get like your, this area here is a thousand cape. You can see there's a little bit of instability here in the Florida panhandle and the southern Georgia. When you get about 500 plus, that could indicate some isolated severe activity, particularly eastern Florida. So some isolated severe thunderstorms, all hazards possible, hail, wind, and tornadoes. I don't think it's going to be a huge outbreak. You can see the jet stream riding up right over that area, but some isolated severe weather. Surely possible Thursday afternoon, evening in this area. You can see those thunderstorms breaking out on the radar as well. Now we're going to look at snowfall amounts. So this is the total snowfall amount. So this is the RGEM computer model. I think it has a good, uh, RGEM probably has the best handle on the amounts in terms of snowfall than the NAM does. You see a little bit of heavy snow down here in parts of uh, Louisiana, Texas, maybe three to six inches in that area. To the north, the storm does lose a little bit of lift as it goes over Tennessee, generally speaking, one to four inches, maybe an isolated five or six inch amount in some areas, again, to the north of uh, Ohio and Indiana and Illinois, mostly one to three inches. A couple areas could see a few more than that. And then as we go towards the northeastern United States, or actually, we'll look at the NAM computer model real fast, and you can see it's very similar. However, I think the NAM is very overdone, particularly in the southern extent here of these snowfall amounts. I do think that's going to be more of a sleet freezing, mostly a sleet and rain type of event. I think it's overdoing it on the southern extent near that rain to snow line. However, again, there could be a couple of isolated amounts where it is snowing, where that lift is really heavy, where you could get a little more than three or four inches. But if I were to make a bet that the Canadian probably has a better handle on this for the most part. Freezing rain. Now I'm going to flip this. This is the NAM forecast for freezing rain. I think the NAM is doing better for the freezing rain amounts than the Canadian is. The Canadian tends to overestimate freezing rain significantly in my experience here. But you don't know, so the NAM that has a axis of freezing rain from west eastern Texas into northern 
parts of Louisiana into western Mississippi, the best axis is going to run right through this area where that lift is. There could be as much as half an inch to maybe 0 0.75 inches in the max areas. Then AM has a little bit more than that. I would say again, maybe a little overdone, but there could be a couple of 0.75 inch reports. That is significant in terms of ice. Okay, anything over half an inch is pretty significant. Look at the Canadian here. The Canadian is forecasting three inches of ice. That is absolutely wild. I don't think that's gonna happen. It's probably gonna be more like what the NAM says for the ice. Now we'll go farther north. Here's the NAM, or this is the Canadian farther north. You'll see two areas, again, Louisiana, and then also out here in Virginia and North Carolina. Not quite as big of an issue for Tennessee. Again, there'll be a second surge just to the east where it redevelops uh, a ice potential. Here's the NAM. Again, this is probably a more accurate view for these ice amounts, a break within Tennessee, and then North Carolina, Eastern Tennessee into Virginia. There again, could be 0 0.25 to as much as 0 0.5 inches of ice with the maximum localized areas potentially seeing close to an inch, 0.75 inches or more. However, it's gonna be highly variable and highly localized. Not everyone's gonna get in on that. In terms of rainfall amounts with this system, pretty significant where those thunderstorms develop here in parts of Georgia, all the way up into Florida, and then all the way up into North Carolina. Amounts one to two inches possible. Same with Louisiana and Mississippi, one to two inches. North where that rain, snow, sleet occurs, you could get as much as a quarter inch to up to an inch. So guys, that's today's update. Hope you enjoyed this video. Share this with a friend, comment below, and we'll see you soon.